An edge old question. Support duty for your striker or attack duty? Which should we use? Support or attack duties for our strikers today. What's the difference? When do we need them? When do we use them? So we've got a little tactic loaded up here with my inter team that I always use to test tactics and stuff like that. They've just got a nice balanced squad that lets me do that. So this is light cheat and steel. This is the lower league tactic. I haven't used it in the higher league tactics, but I'd be interested to see how they go with a big team. But anyway, I digress. So we'll concentrate on these two boys here. We've got an advance forward and attack, and we've got a target forward. And initially, I've got him on support. So what does that mean? So this goes for any of the striker roles that give you the support option. So your support duty means you'll drop a little bit deeper in essence. So for your target forward example, the support duty will target forward look to win flick on to play simple passes to his teammates and bring them into play. When he's on attack, however, he'll lead the line, meaning he's going to be further up. So what's that mean on the pitch is when he's a target forward on support, and this goes for deep line forward on support or any of the others, he's going to be more in this kind of zone. You'll see him in match dropping back, dropping wide if you've got him moving into channels and roaming, he will drop further back. Now, if you have him on attack, he's more often going to be higher up and less likely to drop off. So he's going to be further up, more aggressive, closer to the opposition's defenders. How does that look like in game? Well, here we are. So you can see the boys there in 2D. This is the way I like to do it because you can see movements all over the place. So we've got our front two of Jeco and Rotoro Martinez just there. Now, what we're going to do with them is we've got the ball here. You can already see Jeco the way he's dropping off. He's dropping further back than Rotoro, who is on advanced. We'll play it on Bastoni. Look at Jeco drop, drop, dropping all the time. Remember, he's looking to link up with the player. If he's on attack duty, he's going to be more likely to be up here somewhere like that. But because he's on support, he's looking to drop back, get involved in the game more. Barella's got the ball. He lays it to Dzeko. Now, Dzeko's going to link the play up. He sees the wing back on the far side. And very importantly, now this is where he differs from maybe a number 10. Because Dzeko's played that ball, but look at him now. He's now making a beeline to get in the box. Damien gets it, whips it across. Dzeko's on the end of it. So on a support duty, he's looking to get involved in the game more. Now for me, this is where the support duty for a striker can come in handy if you're not the favourite in a match. We've all seen the formations with double advance forward, aggressive as hell. They're usually the high press ones, high line engagement, high defensive line, aggressive. Now if you're coming up against some like Liverpool, who I cannot beat on this game for love nor money, and you play that formation, you're going to get beat up. If we consider using the drop, drop off forward like we just have, He's got more chance of dropping into midfield to link things up. Maybe we're going to get a bit more of the ball. This should show you as well. This is what I really want you to look at. If you look at the inter stats there, just above my head, it's got all the uh, passes and attempted and completed. Now, if you look at Jeko, he's got double the amount of passes than his strike partner. In fact, using that support role, he's second, I think, only to the playmaker for passes from the attacking group of players. So there you see it. There is Edin Dzeko with 47 passes attempted, completed 89%. His strike partner, Correa, who's the more aggressive one, only 25. And then you can see Perisic, the winger with 37. Damian on the other side with 44. Barella in midfield with 44. Tony Brozovic, who is the playmaker, who has more than Dzeko, who is dropping into these areas, getting involved in the play all the time. So you can imagine, if you've got both your attackers on attack duty and they're not seeing much of the ball... That's an easy switch for you to make. Drop one back, get him involved in the game. Maybe it can make things happen for you. I love the role, but more specifically, I love the duty. It just drops into that gap and it gives you a rake of options. It maybe means that you free up a position whereby a lot of people will have a number 10 in there. You've got to drop off forward, consistently doing that and doing that well. Do you need one in there? Do you need one? Maybe you can do that job for you. So it might free up a position for you. You could even, even if you want to get really funky with it, you could have him as a middle maybe a front three of two advanced ones like that he's going to drop off so them two can get further on it opens up a whole range of possibilities for you but what we'll do now is we'll put him on attack and we'll see the difference we're playing against Cagliari at home so we should be dominating in this one so it shouldn't adversely affect the team but what we're looking for is a change in his position and a change in his overall contribution we want him to be with an attack role higher up make a more of an impact in the box Let's see. Already, already I'm seeing a change. So Brozovic has got the ball down there. 
Now, under the support duty, I would expect Dzeko here to drop in at this sort of area and show for the ball if Brozovic is not going to cross the ball. But what we have here, Brozovic gets it, Dzeko stays where he is. Even now, he's still really high up. He's actually higher up than Lautaro, who is the advance forward. Playing it on, you can see he's not moving. He's sticking right on the edge of that box with the defenders on his attack duty. Barella gets it to him, comes back out. Now, when it comes back out to Barella here, dzeko has got absolutely no thought of dropping off and asking for the ball. He's in the box waiting for it, and the shot comes in. You can see here again, look at him. He's basically dead on line with Lautaro now when, when uh, we haven't got the ball. When we win the ball back, he's still way high. He's not thinking of dropping off ever so slightly, maybe, but he's still really high up as Barella goes through and puts it in. But Dzeko, when he's on attack duty, it's very clear to me that he's staying way higher up than he would be on a support duty. What does that mean for our side? Well, it does mean we're going to have more attacking threat higher up the park. So if you've got creative players, maybe attacking wingers, playmakers, it might be the better option. You might not need him to drop off. But if you're struggling to break a team down, sometimes you need that drop off. This clip kind of shows that. When we get the ball here through Skrinia, Barella gets it. Now, in that position there... I've got Lautaro and Dzeko basically in line. What I really could do with is someone just coming in that gap there, couldn't I? In that gap there, breaking it up. You can see Barella's looking. Who should he pick out? In fact, he goes for the ball over the top and it comes to nothing. So that's why I quite like using that support drop-off striker. But the beautiful thing about this game is there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yes, I like the support duty, but I am not adverse to using a double advance forward like that as well. When I know we're the better team and we're pushing, pushing, pushing. My midfield are getting high up enough that I don't need a drop-off striker. I will do that now and again. It may be an advanced forward on attack, two of them. It may be Dzeko as a target forward on attack. Depends on the player, depends on the situation. The last match against Bologna, I stuck Dzeko as an advanced forward because I knew we were going to dominate. And this happened. You can see the difference in the games here. So against Sassuolo and Cagliari, we played him as that target forward where he drops off a little bit more. Now, being more aggressive in this game against Bologna... Played him as an advanced forward. You can see his pass level is way down because he's not that concerned about dropping off and getting involved. He wants to be on the end of things. And on the end of things he was. Now there's a few of these goals that Dzeko's going to score here. You can see where he is there. He's way high up look. Now if he was target forward on support or whatever forward role on support, he'd probably be dropping off here looking for this ball off DeMarco. But because I've got him on attack duty, look how high up he is. And he's there to break the defensive line and ping it in. Same goes here, there he is again, looking to break through, rather than drop off deep, DeMarco gets it, whips it across shortly, there's Dzeko, pings it in. So there is positives and minuses to having your player higher up or lower down, using support duty, entirely up to you, again, through on goal, on the attack duty, because I know we're going to be the dominating team, and we end up whapping Bologna 6-0. Making this video has been a good reminder for me, sometimes I get a formation working, and I'm that in love with it that I don't like to change things. So even if we're against Bologna or we're against Juventus, I'll keep Dzeko, for example, as a target forward on support and just wait for things to happen. But on a game-by-game -game basis, maybe just a slight tweak to the duty, putting him on an attack, might be all you need to do.